it's really, really important that news organizations not just look at the incremental changes in things like machine learning and how that might be applied to augment journalism, but instead to start really paying attention to the bigger ecosystem itself and the seven big companies that are all working individually and in different types of collaborations to build out the future ecosystem of artificial intelligence. That's important because they are the ones who will decide uh, even what, it, what news means and how that information uh, is spread. So what I'd like to see every news organization do is to b become an equal player in that ecosystem. Look back at the Olympics in, in Brazil, for example. Uh, we automated uh, the results. Uh, and uh, we got the results, they populated uh, pre-written uh, fields, and we were able to deliver the uh, results of uh, matches, of games, uh, all, of, all of the results, uh, almost instantaneously to, to readers. Uh, so that is uh, something that we, we were doing. Uh, no, there was no need for any human being to actually type in the results or anything like that. So what a machine can do uh, better than a human being, we want a, ma a machine to do. We're also using automation or big data uh, to come up with uh, better recommendation, uh, recommendations for readers. So that second or third story that, uh, that people can read. So the list of recommended stories is based on people's individual reading habits uh, and what they might be interested in. And we're finding that those produce far better results than a list of stories that would be developed by uh, a journalist. SAP, we are using automation to uh, increase the volume of stories that we create, as well as to free up journalists' time so they can do more high-impact uh, journalism, such as uh, visual uh, storytelling. Um, we are uh, doing uh, automation in different areas, specifically when it comes to turn data uh, into written stories for both financial news as well as sports. One thing to keep in mind when implementing automation uh, is the data. And therefore, if the data is bad, uh, the, the algorithms and the machines can make errors. So keep that in mind. The reason why I'm very excited about artificial intelligence is the possibility that it has in speeding up journalists' workflows throughout the news process. So if you think about news gathering, think about news production, think about distribution, and then you think about consumption, uh, AI can play a crucial role in speeding up very boring, laborious work. Whether you're cleaning up data sets, whether it's editing videos on the fly, tagging content, or helping form content into little packages ready to go out. Those things are all really exciting. They don't uh, challenge journalists. They actually help journalists do their work and help journalists concentrate on what's really important. The challenges that come alongside that are editors and journalists have been very, very good at building uh, guides, editorial guides, around ethics. Uh, the, the thing with AI is that we don't really have those guidelines yet. This is completely new territory. And when you're designing AI and machine learning, you have the potential for algorithmic bias. Uh, and we need to learn how to design algorithms that can work with the editorial teams and uh, yeah, bring those things together to, to help an ethical use of this technology inside newsrooms. AI automation and personalization is making its way into the newsroom, but we have the challenges of understanding how those systems make their decisions. Um, one of the problems with, with the black box solutions that are becoming more and more prevalent is that users don't understand how big their filter bubble is and how they can break out of it. So we believe that personalization and psychological prediction can help people break out of that by explaining what data has been used in the prediction and giving them ways to interact with that content that corresponds with their psychological profile. Of course, there are huge risks of doing this as well. Um, so if people don't understand what data is being used, they may not know how to interact with the algorithm, and also they may um, end up only reading things that they uh, already believe in and, and not really challenging themselves. So if we can personalize that content and explain how it's being personalized, more importantly, we can help people break out of that bubble and give them new tools to interact with news. We have developed a, a new piece of technology that enables journalists to go out into the world and find relevant bits of content and news that they can add into their article writing. We represent what we think is a new wave of uh, small startup companies that are using AI and machine learning to enhance the experience and to make the experience better for journalists in order to create better content. We're unable to do that because we're smaller, we're more agile, 
we can develop things more quickly and we're not afraid to fail, we can experiment. Um, what we have found is that journalists are very open to this improvement that we can provide them through intelligence and through machine learning that enables them basically to write better stories and to create more impactful and more uh, engaging pieces of content. One of the really interesting examples of um, how we use automation in journalism is a recent example which was done within our team. It's about automated reversioning of um, English language videos into vernacular languages without journalists ever touching the video itself. It's, uh, it solves a really important problem for us because nobody wants 40 journalists around the world speaking 40 different languages, downloading and up uploading videos around the world to just retranslate re them and just publish them uh, back. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a system which would allow um, a front-end interface for the journalist to use. So a journalist comes in, finds the video he wants to reversion, uh, retranslate subtitles, press the button and the video comes back with the uh, vernacular subtitles. It worked so well for us, it has become so popular that on average we are doing about between 700 and 800 videos reversioned using that system a week. Artificial intelligence in newsrooms and it is a very scary thing. I don't think most people know what this is going to mean. It's still too new of a technology. Um, I know for sure that a lot of newsrooms can't even leverage it yet because it's too complex. However, this is going to change a lot of things. It'll change your copy desk, it changes your clearances, it changes how you write listicles, it changes the makeup of your newsroom completely. So it's one of those things you want to keep an eye on in the next two to five years because everything is about to change.